Okay, good morning, everybody. Before we begin our lesson for today, let me first ask if my voice is audible on your end. Am I um, audible, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you for responding. Now, before we start, may I call on uh, Mr. Fiel to please lead the prayer? Okay, sir. Let's close our eyes and feel the presence of the Lord. Uh, let us pray. Dear Lord, help us to understand our lessons for today so that for each hour of study, we may grow and develop ourselves to the best of our capabilities. May you protect us for the rest of this day. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, thank you, Mr. Raimundo. Uh, okay, uh, before we move on to our brand new lesson, um, let me first give you a mot motivational activity that will help you gain uh, background knowledge about what we are going to discuss today. Okay, so here is your activity entitled, How I Be Myself. So here is an instruction. Complete the statements below based on your personal information. Write your answers on a sheet of paper. Okay, and then later on, I will call somebody from the class to share his or her work and then um, answer it truthfully, guys, since the goal of this activity is for you to better understand yourselves. Okay, I will give you um, three minutes to finish the activity. Here are the statements that you need to answer. Are you done, people? Yes, sir. How about the others? You can raise your hands if you are done.
Okay, are you done? Are you finished? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, so I believe you are all done with the activity. So, care to share? Who, want, who wants to share his or her work? No one? Okay, Miss Padul, you share your um, information. Yes, sir, but can you please return? Okay, me? okay, sorry about that. <laughs> Um, my name is Aileen Padul. My nickname is Sai. I am 20 years old. My birthday is December 18, 2000. Advice for myself is keep going. Things I like about myself is being optimistic. Things I hate about myself is overthinking everything. My favorite color is pink. Um, my daily routine is just the usual. I wake up and then study, then watch gay dramas, then sleep. Hobbies, yes, watching movies and gay dramas. What inspires me? Um, um, my inspiration is my parents. My biggest fear is losing the one I love. The music I like is Korean pop. Uh, I don't think I have any talents. <laughs> Unforgettable memory. Um, last January 23, 2016, I attended uh, the concert of my favorite group, EXO. My view in life is um, life is too short to have any regrets. That's okay, it. very good, Miss Padul. Based on your answers, it seems that you really know yourself well. And that is good because um, it is necessary for us to know ourselves if we want to improve for the better. How about uh, Miss Salvador? Is Miss Salvador here? Yes, <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Okay. okay. Um, my name is Marita Salvador. My nickname is Mary Maritas. My age is 13 years old. My birthday is October 31. Um, uh, advice for myself is you don't all you don't have to always worry about everything. It is what it is. So things I like about myself is I am hardworking person, and things I hate about myself is that I'm also an overthinker. My favorite color is pink, and my daily routine is I always wake uh, always wake up at seven a.m. then study then sleep. My hobbies are reading, reading books and watching anything that is related to BTS. Then, uh, what inspires me are my parents. Uh, my biggest fear is losing them, to lose them. And music that I like are OPM and K-pop. Uh, my talents, <laughs> I uh, I think I also don't have talent. Uh, unforgettable memory when me and my friend exchanged gifts last Christmas because I got a cute gift. I will always remember that. And my view in life is life is fair, but people make it unfair. That's wow. awesome. Wow, well, it seems that we have K-pop stands here. Okay, just like Miss um, Padul, I think that Miss Salvador, you are also well aware of your self. Okay, that's good. Very good class. Now, let us move on to um, your next activity. But before that, did you understand yourself better with the help of the sandbox? If not at all, then at least you already gain or you are already one step a little from your unraveling your un unknown self? Then if yes, then congratulations because you have unlocked your unknown self. Um, now our next activity uh, involves a song. So since some, some people say that a song can interpret what words can't express, right? So if you did not um, 
unlocked your unknown self earlier with the sandbox, then perhaps a song will help you. Are you ready, class? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, your next activity is entitled, This is Me. So, wait a minute. I will just present to you the video. Anyway, I apologize already because my um, laptop is a bit slack. <laughs> Okay, did you listen to the song? Wait, let me just go back to my presentation earlier. Okay, so here is the direction of directions of your activity listen to the song carefully and then pay attention to the lyrics jot down important points that you will hear on a sheet of paper okay i believe i already told you this earlier right so we will move on now here are the processing statements the first one i learned through the song that the most important thing about social and cultural identity is or are who wants to answer Okay, Miss Eileen Villia Flor. Good morning, sir. Um, I think uh, knowing who is the most important thing about social and cultural identity is important. So we will not be swayed by other people's opinions. Okay, that is correct, Miss Eileen. So in in the song, uh, they focused on embracing their um, then their scars, embracing their flaws, and accepting that they're themselves or who they are instead of um, listening to other people's judgments. Okay, then now the second one, I am surprised about the social and cultural factors that affect in shaping one's identity, like who wants to answer? Okay, Mr. Raimundo, go on. Okay, so number two, I'm surprised about the social and cultural factors that affect in shaping one's identity, like how other people's opinion opinions toward me uh, towards us affects us greatly. Okay, very good, Mr. Raimundo. The third one is with the re realization about social and cultural factors affecting one's identity. I would or should. Okay, Miss Bernardo. With the realization about social and cultural factors affecting one's identity, I would or should use to improve myself and help me grow as a person. Okay, that's good, Ms. Bernardo. And the last statement is, I want to learn more about... Okay, Ms. Padul, go on. I want to learn more about social and cultural factors that help shape one's identity because it might be helpful for my growth as a person okay very good very good class so you capture the message of the song perfectly this was so this was a song uh sung in in, in a musical film the greatest showman so it is one of the most meaningful songs ever created. Well, at least in my opinion, since um, the song is about empowering oneself and not minding um, other people's judgments. So moving on for you to know the focus of our lesson today, I will leave you this question. So what do you think are the qualities we Filipinos possess which make us unique from other nationalities? Can you give can you name some traits of Filipinos that we have? Okay, Mr. Raimundo. Sir, I think Filipinos are cheerful. 
Yes, right. We are cheerful. So isn't it that Filipinos would often um, smile, laugh, even if um, they are complete, complete strangers? What else? Okay, Mr. Miss Bernardo, rather. Sir, I think we are hospitable. Okay, we are hospitable. So this is one of the most common traits used to describe us Filipinos. We are hospitable in terms of like, um, for example, when there are foreigners in our country, um, we always try our best to communicate with them using their native tongue instead of the other way around, right? Instead of them communicating with us using our native language. But because as far as my knowledge is concerned, that's not the case in most countries. Like for example, in um, most countries like Korea or Japan, if you go there or if you visit their country, it is a must for you to learn their culture, their language, because they will not adjust for you. So you chose to go there, then you must learn their language to communicate with them. But that's not the case here in the Philippines. So that's a sign of being hospitable. What else? Okay, Ms. Salvador is raising her hand. I'm sorry. Um, sir, I think Filipinos are generous. Okay, Filipinos really are generous, especially towards guests or visitors. Okay, so today we are what 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 is the connection of these traits that we talked about in our lesson for today? So today we are going to discover literature as a tool to assert one's unique identity and to better understand other people. In this lesson, um, you are expected to identify social and cultural factors that help shape our ad identities as Filipinos. And second, be able to recognize local color used in the selection. So we will discuss the selection later on. And lastly, is the phrase how the selection serves as an avenue in asserting Filipino identity. <clears throat> Excuse me. So those Filipino qualities that you mentioned earlier is incorporated in a story entitled We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers by Alejandro R. Rosset. So let us now move on to the selection. Can someone read the first paragraph? Okay, Mr. Raimundo. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. We drink for only three good reasons. We drink when we are very happy, we drink when we are very sad, and we drink for any other reason. When the Americans recaptured the Philippines, they built an airbase a few miles from our barrio. Yankee soldiers became a very good sight. I met a lot of GIs and made many friends. I could not pronounce their names. I could not tell them apart. All Americans looked alike to me. They all looked white. Okay. So there's a question. So what impression of American soldiers does the narrator tell about at the beginning of the story? Okay, Miss Padul, go on. Um, the narrator referred to American soldiers as people who look identical because they have a similar skin color. He also cannot pronounce their names as they are foreign to his ears. But apart from that, he stated that he made a lot of GI friends. Okay, that is correct, Ms. Padut. So you see, this story took place after the war ended. So there are still American soldiers left in the Philippines during the liberation period. But perhaps you are all wondering what GI means. So GI stands for government issue. So because back then, those American soldiers who, are who were deployed in the Philippines are labeled as government issue. So the, these soldiers like sort of like um, embrace that um, label. And it's a, sort of a joke inside or between the American soldiers. Okay. Next paragraph, can someone read? Okay, Miss Padula again. 
One afternoon, I was plowing a rice field with our carabao named Tato. I was barefooted and stripped to, to the waist. My pants that were made from ab abaca fibers and woven on homemade looms were rolled up to my knees. My bolo was at my side. An American soldier was walking on the highway. When he saw me, he headed towards me. I stopped blowing and waited for him. I noticed he was carrying a half pint bottle of whiskey. Whiskey bottles seemed to be a part of American uniform. Okay, can someone read the next paragraph? Okay, Miss Salvador. Hello, my little, bro little brown brother, he said, patting me on the head. Hello, Joe, I answered. All Americans are called Joe in the Philippines. Any bars in this town? He asked. That was usually the first question American soldiers asked when they visited our barrio. I'm sorry, Joe, I replied. These are no bars. There are no bars in this barrio. Oh, hell, you know where I could buy more whiskey? No, Joe, I am sorry. We do not drink whiskey. Here, have a swig. You have been working too hard, he said, offering me his half-filled bottle. No, thank you, Joe, I said. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. How about the second paragraph? Who wants to read? No one? Then let's call, um, okay, Miss, Miss Villia Floor. Well, don't you drink at all? Yes, Joe, I drink, but not whiskey. What the hell do you drink? I drink Lambanog. Jungle juice, eh? I guess that is what the GIs call it. You know where I could buy some? I have some. You can have. I have some you can have, but I do not think you will like it. I like it all right. Don't worry about that. I have drunk everything. Whiskey, rum, brandy, tequila, gin, champagne, sake, vodka. He mentioned many more that I cannot spell. Say, you sure drink a lot, don't you? Okay, Miss, uh, how about Miss Bernardo? Okay, Miss Galma. I not only drink a lot, but I drink anything. I drank Chanel Number no. 5 when I was in France. In Eugene, I got sauced with on Williams shaving lotion. When I was laid up in the hospital, I got pie-eyed with medical alcohol. On my way here in, in the transport, I get stoned on torpedo juice. You ain't kidding when you say I drink a lot. So let's have some of the chunko juice, huh? Alright, I said. I will just take care I will just I will just take this car about to the mud hole. Then we can go home and drink. You sure love that animal, don't you? I should, I replied. It does half of my work. Why don't you get two of them? I did not answer. Okay, here's another question. What was the only drink that the narrator could offer? Okay, Miss Bernardo. I think, sir, it was Lambanog. Okay, so it was Lambanog. So later on, we are going to um, know the definition of Lambanog. Okay, I unhitched that from the plow and led him to the mud hole. Joe was following that who lay in the mud in the mud and was going whoosh whoosh. Flies and other insects flew from his back and hovered in the air. A strange warm odor rose out of the mu the mud. A carabao does not have any sweat glands except on its nose. It has to wallow to the mud or bathe in a river about every three hours, otherwise it runs amok. Datu shook his head and his widespread horns scooped the mud, the mud, mud, muddy water on his back. He rolled over and was soon covered with slimy mud. 
an expression of perfect contentment came into his eyes. Then he swished his tail and Joe and I had to move back from the mud hole to keep from getting splashed. I left that too in the mud hole. Then, turning to Joe, I said, let us go. The next paragraph, can someone read? Okay, Miss Padul, go on. And we proceeded towards my house. Joe was seriously looking around. This place is full of coconut trees, he said. Don't you have any coconut trees in America? I asked. No, he replied. Back home, we have the pine tree. What is it like? Oh, it is a tall and stately. It goes straight up to the sky like a skyscraper. It symbolizes America. Well, I said, the coconut tree symbolizes the Philippines. It, start, it starts up to the sky, but then it le its leaves sways down to the earth, as if remembering the land that gave it birth. It does not forget the soil that gave it life. In a short while, we arrived in my Nipa house. I took a bamboo ladder and leaned, leaned it against a tree. Then I climbed the ladder and picked some clemency. Okay, the next paragraph. Miss, um, let us call Miss Bernardo. I believe she's raising her hand earlier. Okay, sir. What was that, Joe asked. Philippine lemon, I answered. We will need this for our drinks. Oh, chasers. That is right, Joe. That is what the soldiers call it. I filled my pockets and then went down. I went to the garden well and washed the mud from my legs. Then we went up a bamboo ladder to my butt. To my hut. It was getting dark, so I filled a coconut shell with a coconut oil, dipped a wick in the oil, and lighted the wick. It produced a flickering light. I unstrapped my ball and hung it on the wall. Please sit down, Joe, I said. Where? He asked, looking around. Right there, I said, pointing to the floor. Joe sat down on the floor. I sliced the calamansi in half, took some rough salt, and laid it on the foot high table. I went to the kitchen and took the bamboo tube where I kept the lambano. Another question. What do you know about the drink? Okay, Miss Padul. Um, sir, Lampanog is an alcoholic liquor made from fermented coconut sap. It is chemical free since it is made from natural coconut fruit, distilled for at least four days or more to produce alcoholic properties. Okay, that is correct, Ms. Padul. So, Lambanog is a traditional alcoholic drink in the Philippines. And although it is not that popular anymore in cities, um, it is still prevalent in some provinces like Batangas, for example. Okay, let us move on. So here, Lambanog is a drink extracted from the coconut tree with pulverized mangrove bark thrown in, in to prevent spontaneous combustion. It has many uses. We use it as a remedy for snake bites, as counteractive, counteractive for mal malaria chills, as an insecticide, and for tanning carabao hide. I poured some lambanog on two polished coconut shells and gave one of the shells to Joe. I diluted my drink with some of Joe's whiskey. It became milky. We were both seated on the floor. I, pour I poured some of my drink on the bamboo floor. It went through this, the slits to, to the ground below. Okay. The next one, let us call Miss Salvador. Hey, what are you doing? Said Joe, throwing good liquor away. No, Joe, I said. It is the custom here always to give back to the earth a little of what we have taken from the earth. Well, he said, raising his shell. There's to the, here's to the end of the war. Here's to the end of the war, I said, also lifting my drink. I gulped my drink down. I followed it with a slice of calamansi dipped in rough salt. Joe took his drink, but reacted in a peculiar way. His eyes popped out like a frog's and his hand clutched at his throat. He looked as 
if he had swallowed a centipede. Okay, thank you, Ms. Salvador. So what do you think happened to Joe? Okay, Ms. Padul? Um, perhaps the alcohol percentage of Lambanog is too high for his tolerance. His body was not familiar with the properties of Lambanog since this was actually his first time to try this alcohol. In fact, he did say at the beginning of the story that he drinks a lot, but he hasn't tried this particular jungle juice. Okay, you are correct, Ms. Padul. So indeed, Lambanog has a, a high vo alcohol volume or content. Uh, so according to DOST or the Department of Science and Technology, Lambanog has a minimum of like 40 to 45% alcohol content, which is almost half of its content property. So a regular um, alcoholic drink has a minimum of like 20% alcohol content. So you can just imagine how strong Lambanog is compared to other alcoholic beverages. So I think it has something to do with the fact that it is pure organic. So, and though, so there's no artificial additives or chemicals added to it. Okay, let us move on. Quick, a chaser, he said. I gave him a slice of calamansi dipped, dipped in unrefined salt. He squirted it in his mouth, but it was too late. Nothing could chase her. The calamansi did not help him. I don't think even a co coconut would have helped him. Okay, what phrase, what phrase or phrases in the narrator's description of Lambanag earlier help you predict what will happen next? Okay, Ms. Ray, Mr. Raimundo. Sir, the phrase spontaneous combustion, that description from the narrator is a conspicuous hint that Lambanog has a high alcohol content that makes it uh, flammable and produce combustion. Okay, very good, Mr. Uh, Raimundo. So where is it? Where's my annotating toolbox? Just a second. Where is that? Spontaneous combustion. There. So Mr. Raimundo is correct. Since um, Lambarog has a high, higher uh, alcohol content compared to other drinks, it produces combustion. Okay. Let us move on. Let us call this time Ms. Maramag. Is Ms. Maramag here? Perhaps she was, she's not. Okay, let us call Miss Bernardo again. Hey, sir. What is wrong, Joe? I asked. Nothing, he said. The first drink always affects me this way. He was panting hard and tears were rolling down his cheeks. Well, the first drink always acts like my sweeper, I said, but this second one will be smooth. I filled his shell for the second time. Again, I diluted my drink with Joe's whiskey. I gave Joe his shell. I noticed that he was, he was beaded with perspiration. He had unbuttoned his collar and loosened his tie. Joe took his shell but did not seem very, did not seem very anxious. I lifted my shell and said, Here is to America. I was trying, I was trying very hard to be a good host. Here's to America, Joe said. Okay, we both killed our tricks. Joe again reacted in a funny way. His neck stretched out like a turtle's, and now he was panting like a carabelle, gone amok. He was grasping his tie with one hand. Then he looked down on his tie, threw it to one side, and said, Oh Christ, for a while I thought it was my thumb. After this, he started to tinker with his teeth. What's wrong, Joe? I asked, still trying to be a perfect host. Plenty. This damp stuff had loosened my bridge work. As Joe exhaled, a moth flying around a flickering flame fell dead. He stared at the dead moth and said, and they talk of BDT. 
So guys, did you know what DDT is? Is that no. familiar with it? Okay, so DDT means like chlorodiphenyl trichlorothane. Just a small trivia. It's a, it's a kind of insecticide. Okay, continue. Let us call Miss Billia Floor. Yes, sir. Okay. Well, how about another drink? I asked. It is what we came here for. No thanks, he said. I'm through. Surely you will not refuse any. Sure, surely you will not refuse my hospitality. Okay, just once more. I poured the juice in the shells and again diluted mine with whiskey. I handed Joe his drink. Here's to the Philippines, he said. Here's to the Philippines, I said. Joe took some of his drink. I could not see very clearly in the flickering light, but I could have sworn I saw smoke out of his tears. This stuff must be radioactive, he said. He threw the remains of his drink on the nipple wall and yielded. Blaze, goddamn you, blaze. So what do you think happened next? Okay, Miss Padul. Um, most certainly Joe passed out after his third drink. Okay, just I was just as I was getting in the mood to drink, Joe passed out. He lay on the floor flat as a starfish. He was in a class all by himself. I knew that the soldiers had to be back in their barracks at a certain time, so I decided to take Joe back. I tried to lift him. It was like lifting a caramel. I had to call four of my neighbors to help me carry Joe. We slung, we slung him on top of my caramel. I took my bolo from my house and strapped it on my waist. Then I proceeded to take him back. The whole barrio was wondering what had happened to the big Americano. Okay, let us call. Is Miss Gelman here? I think. Okay, Mr. Raimundo. After two hours, I arrived at the airfield. I find I found out which barracks he belonged to and took him there. His friends helped me take him to his cot. They were glad to see him back. Everybody take me for taking him home. As I was leaving the barracks to go home, one of his buddies called me and said, Hey you, how about a can of beer of beer before you go? No thanks, I said. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. Okay, well done everyone. Now that you, we finished reading the story, let us discuss and test your understanding about the literary piece. So this literary piece is entitled We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers by Alejandro Rosses. It's a story about two characters, two different characters actually, having a conversation over uh, some drinks. So the story took place in the Philippines right after World War II. Another question, what do you think is the intention of the author in writing this literature? Miss Villa Flor? Uh, I think uh, so, so that we can learn about the differences between Filipinos and Americans in terms of culture and also attitudes, which is necessary in understanding the unique identity of the two races. Okay, very well, Miss Villa Flor. Indeed, indeed, right? So in the story, Rosses is trying to educate us of the statement that once one man's drink is another man's poison. So it means that something must be beneficial for someone, but might be bad for the other. Just like in the story, um, Lambanog is beneficial or somehow good for the Filipino, but it has a negative or detrimental effect for the Americano. So also it means that it's okay to have different beliefs and um, thoughts in life because we are all different. So it's not an everyday event to meet someone who has the same views in life, the same as you, right? 
So moving on, let us talk about the elements or the specific descriptions that the author incorporated in his story. Like, for example, is the use of some non-English words like calamansi and tambanog. What else? Can you can you name some? Okay, Miss Bernardo. Sir, the detailed description of clothes and the setting pop. Okay, the, the detailed description of clothes like the abaca fibered pants and the nipa hat. What else? Mr. Imunda? Uh, the Filipinos' customs of giving back to the nature. Okay, when the Filipino poured some of his drinks uh, to the ground. What else? Miss Salvador? Um, also, the focus on the Filipino culture, customs, and our way of living. Okay, very good, Miss Miss Salvador. So it is good that you notice these details because they are a fact. They are factors of what we are going to discuss today, which is local color. So what is local color? Local color is the style of writing derived from the presentation of the features and peculiarities of a particular locality and its inhabitants. It describes the dialect, customs, topography, or any other characteristics that are unique to a certain place or region. So earlier, the usage of the non-English words galamansi and lambanog is an example of a local color because the author refers to them as, although the, the author refers to them as Philippine lemon, and well, jungle juice, I think, for Lambanog, it is clear that he used Kalamansi and Lambanog in the succeeding events because there are actually no English counterparts for the for these words. Okay, Kalamansi and Lambanog. What else? How about the practice of giving back to the nature that your classmate mentioned earlier? How is it related to Philippines' local color? Okay, Ms. Padul. Um, it is a local color because it is a custom or a belief that only Filipinos practice. It is unique to our culture. That is why Joe asked him why he was throwing good liquor away. Therefore, he is confused since it is not a custom in America where Joe came from. Okay, that is true. That is like a Filipino belief or like custom. How about this? What is this? The abaca fibered pants. How is it related to local color of the Philippines? Miss Bernardo. The author's description of clothes, which is the part of my pants that were made from abaca fibers and woven on homemade blooms, is an example of local color because it is the usual attire of Filipinos back then. Even the bolo in his waist depicts the primary job of Filipinos, which is farming. A bolo is a single-edged knife used by farmers. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bernardo. You are correct. How about this? What is this? Okay, Mr. Raimundo. Sir, it's a uh, Nipa hut or the Bahai Kubo. Nipa hut is mentioned in the story. We all know that it is a traditional home made of bamboo that is indigenous in our country. Okay, very good, Mr. Raimundo. How about this? What does this tree symbolize? Coconut trees. Ms. Padul? Um, also, the coconut trees, which the author described as the symbol of the Philippines, meaning these trees are native to the Philippines. Okay, very good, Ms. Padul. So it was said in the, um, in the selection that it symbolizes the Philippines, while on the other hand, pine trees symbolize the America. Okay, excellent work, my dear students. Those things that you mentioned 
are examples of the color of uh, local color of the Philippines. But how about here in Bulacan? Can you name some examples of local color that are unique to our province? What are the unique customs or practices that are only unique to Bulacanos? Okay, Mr. Raimundo. Um, sir, in Bulacan, we do not just address our older siblings as kuya or ate, but we use specific terms such as diko for our second older brother or diche for our second older sister. Okay, thank you, Mr. Raimundo. Honestly, I'm not that familiar with that diko diche thing, but I'm aware that it was it is used in some um, parts of Bulacan. Can you name some other answers? Okay, Miss Vilia Flor. Um, I think Sir Bulacanos would often say, magurong ka ng plato <laughs> instead of ano po, magugas ka ng plato. Okay, that is true as well, Miss Vilia Flor. So I am familiar with that because I often hear those words from my mom since I'm, an, I'm the unofficial dishwasher here in our household. Anyway, I have an example. Here in Ago here in Hagono, we speak differently compared to the other Bulacanya. So I think that everyone's aware of that. If you are uh, familiar with Punto, or some people call it accent in speaking, it is undeniable that we actually have um, stronger accent compared to the other um, Bulacanyas. Some people call it uh, speaking in a sing-song way. So an example of that is like this. Um, ano ba'y ulam? Ano ba'y ginagawa mo diyan? Ayan. Did you notice? There's a, always a high tone at the end of the sentences, especially if it's a question. Anyway, moving on. Now that you have finally distinguished um, local color, let us now test your understanding about the selection by answering this assessment activity entitled Pick me. So to attain a deeper understanding of the story, I want you to answer this short assessment that will check your knowledge regarding the piece that we have read. So answer them orally. Is that clear, class? Do you have any questions so far? None, sir. Okay, thank you for responding. Here is the directions. Read the questions carefully and then choose the letter of the correct answer for each question. So the first um, question, can someone read an answer? Okay, Mr. Raimundo. Number one, it is the style of writing derived from the presentation of the features and peculiarities of a particular locality and its inhabitants. The answer is letter A, local color. Le local color. Okay, it is A, correct. Very good, Mr. Raimundo. How about the second question? Miss Bernardo, go on, please. It describes the dialect, customs, topography, or any other characteristic that are unique to a certain place or region. The answer is local color, letter okay. A. Okay, still, it is local color. How about the third one? Okay, Miss Padul. What is the quality Filipinos have when accommodating visitors? Letter B, hospital, hospitality. Okay, it is letter B. How about the next question? Okay, Miss Salvador. Who is the author of We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers? A, Abelardo Rosas. B, Abelardo Rojas. C, Alejandro Rosas. D, Abelardo Rojas. Letter C, Alejandro Rosas. Okay, letter C. It is Alejandro Rosas process the number five okay mr raimundo number five what are the two non-english words used in the text the answer is letter d calamansi and lambanog letter d okay correct number six miss Vilia floor based on the text what is the name of the carabao um, letter B, sir. That too. K, 
Okay, very good, Miss Celia Flor. Number seven. Okay, Miss Padul. Which of the following is not a good reason for drinking according to text? Letter C, we drink for leisure. Okay, very good, Miss Padul. We drink for leisure is not uh, included in this election earlier. Number eight, who wants to answer? Okay, Miss Bernardo. Why do you think it is important to be accommodating to your guests or even to strangers? Letter D, to make them feel they matter. Okay, letter D. Very good, Miss Bernardo. How about number nine? Okay, Miss Padul. What are the two races pres present in the story? Um, letter B, Filipino and American. Okay, Filipinos and Americans. Last one, Mr. Raimundo. Number 10, it is a drink extracted from the coconut tree which, with pulverized mangrove bark thrown in, thrown in to prevent spontaneous combustion. The answer is letter C, Lambanog. Okay, letter C, Lambanog. So excellent work, class. You have successfully answered all the questions correctly but let us test now if you can arrange the events in the story accordingly by answering your second activity for today entitled sequencing events so just arrange the events of the story we filipinos are mild drinkers in chronological order using letters a to e write your answers on a sheet of paper so here are the events i will give you Two minutes, is it fine to answer the activity? Yes, sir. Okay, do you have any questions so far? No, no sir, everything's sir. clear. Okay, uh, start answering now. Are you done, people? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, who wants to answer? I. <laughs> Sorry about that. Who wants to answer number one? Okay, Mr. Raimundo. 
Number one, we both killed our jinx. Joe again reacted in a funny way. His neck stretched out like a turtle's, and now he was panting like a carabao going amok. He was gasping his, his thigh with one hand, then he looked down on his thigh, threw it, threw it to one side, and said, Oh Christ, for a while I thought it was my tongue. I think it should, it's letter C. Okay, it is letter C. So this is the third event in the story, happened in the story. How about the number two? Yes, Miss Padul? One afternoon, I was plowing a rice field with our carabao named Tat. I was barefooted and stripped to the waist. My pants that were made from abaca fibers and woven in homemade looms were rolled up to my knees. My bolo was at my side. I think the answer is letter B. Is it letter B? Okay, it is letter B. So this one is the second event that happened in the story. How about the num how about number three? Who wants to answer? Okay, Miss Billia Flor. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. We drink for only three good reasons. We drink when we are very happy, we drink when we are very sad, and we drink for any other reason. When the Americans recaptured the Philippines, the Philippines they built an air base a few miles from our barrio. Yankee soldiers became a very common sight. I think, sir, this is letter A. Okay, it is letter A. So this is the first thing that happened in the selection. It's included in the introduction. How about the number four? Okay, Miss Bernardo. Just as I was getting in the mood to drink, Joe passed out. He lay on the floor flat as starfish. He was in a class all by himself. I think it's letter D. Okay, correct. It is letter D. And num last number? Let's call Miss Salvador. I believe she raised her hand earlier. Okay, sir. Number five. After two hours, I arrived at the airfield. I found out which barracks he belonged to and took him there. His friends helped me take him to his cot. They were glad to see him back. Everybody thanked me for taking him home. As I was leaving the barracks to go home, one of his buddies called me and said, Hey, you, how about a can of beer before you go? No, thanks, I said. We Filipinos are mild drinkers. Sir, I think it is uh, letter E. Okay, very good. It is letter E. It is the last part of the selection. Okay, very good, everyone. You have arranged the events properly. This means that you really paid attention to the story. Now, what I want you to do is to give your thoughts or your insights regarding the passages that I will be presenting through this activity entitled Color Me Loca. So you just read the following passages from the selection and then determine how local color is achieved through characters, dialects, customs or topography and other features specific to a region here is the first passage or text okay mr raymundo number one well i said the coconut tree symbolizes the philippines it starts up to the sky but then its leaves sway down to earth as if remembering the land that gave it birth it does not forget the soil that gave it life uh, the local color is achieved in this passage through the description of the coconut tree as, <clears throat> as this symbolizes the Filipino character of being thankful for what they have and giving back to those whom are in need. Okay, very good, uh, Mr. Raimundo. Very detailed uh, insight. Next. Miss Padul. One afternoon, I was plowing a rice filled with our carbo named Tatu. I was barefooted and stripped to the waist. My pants that were made from abaca fibers and woven on home homemade looms 
were rolled up to my knees. My bolo was at my side. The local color is achieved in this passage through the description of the clothes, as this symbolizes the Filipino custom of embracing our simple but meaningful living. It also shows how dedicated we are in doing our jobs. Okay, thank you, Ms. Uh, Padul. You are correct. How about number three? Who wants to answer? Okay, Ms. Bernardo. Joe sat down on the floor. I sliced the calamansi in half, took some rough salt, and laid it on the foot-high table. I went to the kitchen and took the bamboo tube where I kept my lambano. So, the local color is achieved in this passage through the description of the Filipino character as this symbolizes our hospitality. We tend to do all the work and treat our guests with importance. Okay, thank you, Ms. Bernardo. You are correct. How about the number four? Who wants to answer? Miss Salvador? Flies and other insects flew from his back and hovered in the air. A, stran a strange worm other rose out of the model. A carabao does not have any sweat glands except on his nose. It has to wallow in the mud or bath in, the wa in a river about every three hours. Otherwise, it runs amok. Amok. So the local color is achieved in this passage through the description of the carabao's mud bath as this symbolizes our affection towards our companions. Uh, it does not matter whether it is a person or an animal. As long as they have done good things to us, we always wanted to return the favor. Okay. Very good, Miss Salvador. And lastly, let us call Miss Villa Flor. Okay. In a short while, we arrived in my Nipa house. I took a bamboo ladder and leaned it against a tree. Then I climbed the ladder and picked some calamansi. Um, the local color is achieved in this passage, passage through the description of the Nipah, as uh, the Nipah symbolizes our country's topography. It is the common way of living in some provinces in the Philippines. Okay, very good, Miss Villa Flor. Well done, everyone. Well, well done, class. It seems that you already understand the concept concept of local color. Now, let us check if you can match the concepts with their definition through this activity entitled Matchy Matchy. Okay, just read and analyze each statement below and try to match column A with column B. Answer the activity orally. So here are the state the um, statements. Who wants to answer number one? Okay, Mr. Raimundo. Number one, Alejandro R. Rosas. I believe the answer is letter C, author of the We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers. Okay, letter C. You are correct. How about the number two? Ms. William Flor. Um, number two, what was the common sight in the barrio? I think, sir, it's letter B, alcoholized Americans. Okay, letter B, correct. How about the number three? Ms. Padul? Three, Lambanog. I think it's letter E, a drink extracted from the coconut tree with pulverized mangrove bark thrown into per prevent spontaneous combustion. Okay, very good, Miss uh, Padul. It is the definition of lambanog in the, according to the text. How about number four? Miss Bernardo? Uh, I think it's a that too. Carabao's okay, name the is Carabao's Datu. name is Datu. And lastly, let's call Miss Maramag. I believe she raised her hand. Yes, sir. Number five, favorite story in the barrio. So I think the answer is letter D. A drunk 
Young soldier was relieved that his hands were full of blood and his whiskey didn't spill when he stumbled with a bottle of whiskey in his pocket. Okay, very good. Good job, class. You can easily distinguish the Filipino concepts in the story. But did you know the concepts of the Americans? Well, then let us find out together how knowledgeable you are in differentiating the Filipinos and the Americans' culture through this task entitled Culture Check. Now, you just, the following are a list of some qualities or characteristics that of the Philippine and Western culture, traditions, and customs. Put a check if the item is a part of the Philippine culture and X, X if not. Read and answer through oral recitation. Here are the concepts. Who wants to answer number one? Okay, Mr. Raimundo. Number one, mild drinkers. I think it's a check, sir. It is a check. Sorry about my drawing. It's hard to draw in using the mouse. Okay, number two. Miss Maramad. Number two, liberal. I think, sir, it is X. It is X. Okay, number three. Miss Salvador. A uh, loud noise to drive away evil spirits. Uh, I think, sir, it is check. It is check. Okay, number four, Miss Billia Floor. Number four, hospitable. It's check, sir. Still, it is check. How about number five? Miss Padul? Going out to eat or ordering takeout foods. I think it's X. Okay, it's X. How about number six, Miss Bernardo? Use Oppo and Oppo. I think it's check. It is check. Okay, number seven, Miss William Floor. A variety of round shaped fruits during Christmas season. It's check, sir. Still, it is check. How about number eight? Okay, Mr. Raimundo. Number eight, small talk. I think it's X, sir. It's X. Okay, very good. Number nine. Miss Bernardo. Political correctness. I think it was X. X. Okay, very good. And lastly... Miss Villa Floor, go ahead. It pansit can pansit for long and for long life and fortune. Um, I think sir, it's check. Okay, it's check. Well done, everyone. You have completely uh, matched or distinguished the Filipino and American culture. Now. Um, you, it seems that you already um, understand the selection, we Filipinos are mild drinkers by Alejandro Rosas. Give yourself a virtual applause for a job well done. Okay, before ending our class, I will give you your assignment for our next meeting. So I already posted it on our Google Classroom, so you can just check that on your most conven convenient time. So you just need to create a slogan regarding the story, We Filipinos Are Mild Drinkers, and briefly explain how the selection serves as an avenue in asserting Filipino identity. So you will be graded according to this rubric. Just pass the, the, the assignment to me before our next meeting, which is, I think, on Monday. So do you have any questions, class clarifications? None so far, sir. None, if, sir. Okay, thank you for responding. If none, then let us call it a day. Good job, everyone. Uh, take care and God bless. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank sir. you sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.